Today we're going to add some outlets and tap into an existing circuit. So what we're going to do is these outlets down here and there's another one way down there. They are not tapped into the power. Ran the Romex into the crawl space and it's just laying there on the ground in the crawl space. We also want to add an outlet behind that shelf and that shelf and then tie them all into an existing circuit somewhere in the crawl space. I'm going to try to find somewhere in here in the middle where I'm not going to hit a stud. Hopefully there's some space right here in the middle somewhere. Alright, so I know there's a stud here. I can see where the screws are by those raised up spots. So I'm assuming this is open over here. Yeah. We'll measure up from the floor for the right outlet height and we'll draw our box and cut it out. There's a standard height for outlets when they're being installed originally, but sometimes you go in different houses and they're at different heights. We're just going to measure where these outlets are. 13 inches to the bottom of the actual box. 13 and 17. That's what we'll do over there. This here is called an old work box. You simply cut a hole in the drywall the size of this box and insert it into the hole you made. And then when you screw these two screws in, this screw and this screw, they lift these little wings and they draw them tight to the drywall and lock the box in place. Line up the bottom of the box with that mark. Put a level on it. And trace it off. Get out our jab saw. And I like to just wiggle this to get started. There it goes. Little wiggle just inside the line. See if that fits. Usually doesn't the first try, at least for me. So I try to make them a little tight. Oh, perfect. First try. Look at that. Thing is, when you test fit them and try to take them back out again, sometimes the little tab flips down and you can't get it past the drywall. So you just take your screwdriver. There it goes. Now we got this hole, and the idea is to drill down inside the bottom plate down there and get it to come out in the crawl space. Now obviously we could hit some things. I've drilled these before where I've gone through the bottom plate, through the subfloor, and then straight into a joist. And it just kept going and going, and I'm like, why is this taking forever? And I realized I was going right down the middle of a joist. So anything can really happen like this. We're just hoping that we find an open spot down there. I call this a fish bit, but it's actually just called a flexible drill bit. It's pretty long. And it is usually used in conjunction with this tool right here. So the way it works is there's these two hooks here. One on the front, one on the back. And you hook the front like that and the back like that. And it enables you to bend the drill bit so that it goes down through the bottom plate and through the subfloor to where you can pull the wire out in your basement. Now obviously you can use it going up through the top plate as well 
and pull the wire through the attic, but today we're going to be going through to the crawl space. So the idea is that inside there, you get this hooks on there, and you bend it so that it goes straight down through the bottom plate. Oh, that went straight through. Easiest one I've ever done. Attach this from my drill. I don't want this to fall all the way through. I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to put a clamp on it. Now we'll go down in the crawl space and see if we can find the other end of this drill bit. Oh, I think I see it already. Yes, I do. Uh, see, this is what I'm talking about. When you drill, you might hit a joist. Now, let me turn the light on. Look at that. So, we just dodged that joist. Otherwise, I could have gone straight down into this joist and been drilling deep, deep, deep down through here. In fact, it's a double joist. Look at that. So you just never know. So the other outlet that we're installing should be somewhere in line with this as well. So we'll just have to remember to kind of stay this way and we should be perfect. Awesome. So all I'm gonna do, take this blue tape and mark this because this is gonna be easy to fish wire up through there. I don't need to worry about hooking onto the end, but that's actually what this, this hole is for. I don't know if you can see that, the hole right there. That hole is to stick wire in and pull your wire back up into whatever hole you've drilled. But I'm just going to tear off a piece of this. I'm just going to mark right where my hole is. So I know when I come back under here, look for the blue tape and right above it is the hole I just drilled. So now we'll go over here inside the house, cut another hole, drill another hole, and then we'll be pulling some wire. But really quick, let's go see if we can find where we dropped our wire from those other boxes. Oh, there it is. So there you go, you see? That is the pony wall up there, and we dropped this cable down here. I wonder if that'll reach from there to there. I think it might just. Actually, something else I want to do while I'm still down here is find the outlet or cable we're going to tap into. There's a junction box right there. That might make it easy. Depends on what all's hooked to that. Let's see. That way. That way. Another junction box. Wow. So that goes to that outlet right there. So this is going to be fairly easy. We have a lot of choices of where we can tap in power. And it's actually very nearby where our hole is. Hook it back up to the drill to back it out. Now let's head over here. See if we can find some studs in this wall. Looks like there's something. there so should be open right here take our measurements and make our marks Let's drill through the plate. Clamp 
up on it and go find it in the crawl space. Oh, look at that. Got a nice little ball of insulation on it to show us right where it is. So let's mark it with some blue tape. If you're doing a lot of these, it's probably good to draw an arrow on the tape to show which side of the joist the hole is on. Get this off there. Won't go back through the hole with all this on there. I think what I'm gonna do, since this hole is so close to that junction box right there, is I will tap into that one. And this outlet on this corner will begin the circuit and then go over to that one and then way over there to the other one. But first I'll show you what you do to test the power. This is a test light. When you turn it on, it's green as long as it's not sensing power. Now, if it gets near power, it turns red. That tells you where you have any active circuits. So this box should be lit up pretty good. So we're going to go and turn off some breakers until we make sure that box is dead. And then we can start pulling cable to our new boxes. Oh, I found another box here that's pretty much just as close and it's not covered by a duct like that one over there. This might be easier to access. This looks like this is going to be the back bedroom outlets. So let's go, let's go try that one. Hmm. Master bedroom. Probably that one. Let's try that. Eight. Oh, not that one. Uh, well. Not that one. Not that one. Ah. Nope. Yep. Yep, yep. This one. Hmm. Well, that's not the one I want. That's not close enough. Turn that back on. Let's try that one. Fireplace blower. 21. 21. Finding the circuits is sometimes the hardest part of the entire electrical job. Oh. Oh, I think we got the one we want. All right, this box is dead. I marked it with some blue tape so I don't forget which one it is and tap into something live. Some of you might be thinking, but Dave, I need to tap into power and I don't have a junction box. Well, there'll be a forthcoming video on how to tap into power and create your own junction box or two. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you wanna see that video, you might want to subscribe and stay tuned. It'll probably be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Get our bit back out. There we go. Get our Romex. Let's see if this little bit will make our first run. Let's see if it'll make it from right here. Just wrap it around there. over to the new box. No, I don't think it's going to be quite long enough to get up inside there into the box. So, we'll start with some new. There we go. So I'm going to push that up through until I think I have some to spare. Then we'll just clamp this. Right there. So we don't lose it. And we'll pull us some cable over this way. Make sure we have enough. 
to this box and cut it. Push that up over this duct. I'm just gonna hook it here temporarily. Now I should be able to find that wire by just sticking my hand in here. There it is. Right there. Plenty to work with. And what I like to do is just get about 10 inches or so out. Put a little bend in it. Like that. Not, not too, too hard. That way, if the wire gets pulled back in there, it hooks over the edge of the drywall and doesn't pull it all the way through. Now we can go take our clamp off and fish the next wire. So we need another cable going up there into the same box because this is going to be our supply power from this box right here. And the power has to go in here and then back out to the next one in line and back out to the next one in line. So two wires here, one comes out, one goes in, one comes out, one goes in the next one. Start fishing the second wire. Now we'll take this cable and run it over to our next box. Obviously you want to go over your pipes and over your duct work. Box is there. We could probably pull enough and go ahead and cut it. So let's see. Across there, up over the duct, up into the wall, and imagine it going up into the wall. Probably cut it right about here. Alright, let's go up over that duct. And, and straight up to the hole. That looks like it's going to stay. We might be able to go ahead and run our second one up there. I'm just going to kind of kink that back here to kind of support it so it doesn't fall back through until we get back up there. So we got one in and one out. Put a little kink in that. Keep that from going back through. Let's check the next one. Oh yeah. Sometimes you get lucky like this and it not only comes up through the hole, it comes comes through the box hole as well. Go ahead and put a little fold in that. And see if we can find our other one. Let's see it back there. Perfect. Kink in that. A little lower. Now we can go pull the rest of it. Oh wait, I totally forgot. We didn't need to pull two of those because we've got wire coming down from this one that we're going to pull up into that one, which will complete our circuit. Hello. Oh so here are the two we pulled just a second ago, but we need to pull that yellow one from over there. Over this light fixture here. Over this duct work. Two right over here. We're going to come back and staple all this up here. So now I can pull this one back out. Should be able to pull out that kink if I tug hard enough. There it goes. And let's see, we'll cut this one. It goes to there. Like that goes up to the outlet. Right about here. Fish that up there. There is the cable from the pony wall. That's it. Let's walk through this. Power comes in from our junction box to here, goes back out from there, in to there, back out from there on the yellow, and in to there, and then on to the rest of this 
Only one. I just bust a couple of these. some 15 amp outlets these kind don't have the push connectors I'm fine with the push connectors I know a lot of people don't like to use them but you know I've never had a problem with them I think it depends on the quality of the outlet you buy some cheap outlets maybe the push-in connectors don't work as well but these you simply loosen these screws here white is for the neutral wire that's a white screw yellow or gold is for the black wire so black always goes to the gold white always goes to the silver and your ground here and you can see as you put your wire in here and you tighten that screw pulls a clamp that clamps down on the wire inside there the Romex stripper these things are like a dollar two dollars at the store it's just really cheap metal they bent into this shape and they've taken a little puncher and punched that piece down and sharpened it what you do is you stick your Romex through it Squeeze that down and pull the Romex and that little blade right there just slits the Romex right down the middle and helps you peel it apart. So I just feed it through there, clamp down on the wire right in the middle and just pull it and then you can see all the insulation comes right off without it nicking the wires. So if you use a knife or something, scissors or something, you're likely to nick the wires. But since the blade goes in line with the wires, it, it just runs down in between them. This one, clamp, squeeze, pull, just like that. Pull back the insulation and all off to the side. Just cut it with my wire cutters. All right, a lot of times these will have a measurement gauge on them to show you how long to cut your wire and it, or how long to strip your wire. And it says that right there is how long to strip it. So about that long right there usually about a half inch. So we'll just strip all these. Two, three, and four. Might be a little long there. Let me just snip that off a little bit. Now, the in and out power, all we do is do one white here, the other white there, one black here, the other black there, and that covers that. But we only have one ground screw. Now some people will actually twist these together and screw it on that, but the appropriate way to do it is to wire another ground wire to these grounds, which is wired to here. So that's what we'll do. So for the ground, I'm going to use these three-port push-in connectors. I got me a piece of extra ground wire. I always keep extra whenever I strip Romex. Have little cut-off pieces. I save all the wire because you're going to need that eventually. If you do any electrical, you'll need extra white and extra black and extra ground to make pigtails. 
Just cut me off a short piece, about mm, five inches, six inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and loop one end. So I just grab that with my pliers and I twist it around like that. I like to give it a little tightening squeeze. This is actually 12 gauge wire, which I'm working with 14 here, but going up a gauge is okay. That looks good. All right, go ahead and put that on our receptacle. Screw it down. Nice and snug. Now I've got my receptacle with my ground wire. Now, put this in one of the ports there. Push it all the way so you can see it, the, the copper all the way to the end. And do the same with the other two. All the way. Put the black and the gold. You can actually do up to four if you have enough space in your box. Like I could put both of these in this one gold side or I can put one up there and one down there. Put them both in the one side. Tighten that up. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this too so the screws don't come out because when they're loose they might stick out and actually short something so I'm going to just go ahead and tighten that anyway. Now to the white side. White in. White in. Remember, white goes to silver screws, black goes to gold screws. That's it. I'll tighten this one just to be safe. Make sure they're all snug. Snug, still seated. And fold everything up in there. So you make sort of a hinge with them. So I go up with that one, go up with that one too. And then we'll go down here and then as we push it in they kind of collapse like a, an accordion or something. Take our screwdriver and top hole. see those grounds sticking out there we don't want that because they'll touch these screws and cause it to short out so make sure those grounds go all the way back in there don't want those to touch any of the screws except the ground screw if you have an electric screwdriver drill impact driver now's the time you might want to use it Outlet cover. And that's one down. Strip the wires, about a half an inch. Let's 
tie our grounds together. And twist. Snug, ensure connector, seat it all the way. There we go. All three are seated. Now, gold to black. Double check the torque on that with my screwdriver. Yeah, nice and snug. Silver to white. I'll go ahead and tighten up my other screws. Double check my torque on that. Nice and snug. Everything's in there good. Everything's nice and snug. Now, make my hinges. Make sure the ground wire gets way out of the way of all the screws. You don't want that ground touching any of those screws. And collapse it all in there. There we go. And the cover plate. All right, number two down. All right, we're back at our junction box. This is the one we turned off the power to. We'll double check that. We'll actually triple check that by the time we're done. Let's remove the cover. You actually don't have to loosen these screws all the way. They just slide off like that. Now let's check the innards for power. Just make sure. Yep, no power. So this is the piece that we want to bring in there. This is coming from our first outlet. And you got to have them in a clamp. So there's a clamp right there. There's plenty of space. In fact, it's not even really clamped down on these things. Whoever wired it didn't clamp it good. We'll just bring that wire, that cable in there with them. The Romex off. Now let's get our other sets of wires down so we can work with them. Now this is a metal box and it should have a grounding screw inside of it, grounding the ground wires to the box itself, and it doesn't. The proper thing would be to go get a grounding screw and ground the whole thing to the box, but since this is the way they did it, Now, take the wire nuts off the white. How many are here? There's four already there. We need a bigger wire nut than that. Let's go ahead and strip our white. Strip our black while we're at it. And we'll take the black apart. We'll untwist them so we can add our wires to them. We're gonna add our black over here. We're gonna add our white right here. So this is a tricky part. Get them all bunched together, all the copper touching. Get our pliers, twist them all together. All right, there we go. 
Now I'm happy. Push that up in there. Do the same thing with the blacks. Get them all twisted nice and tight. And then wire nut it. Push all that back up in there. The cover plate. There we go. All right, I just can't sleep like that. I gotta ground this box. And the reason you ground boxes like this is if say the wire nut came off of one of these conductors or if the insulation got stripped off the black somewhere and the wire or some part of the wire touched the outside of the box this box would become energized and if somebody touched it it could electrocute them or you know it could start a fire it could do all sorts of things so what you want to do is you actually want to take one of your ground wires and ground the box as well so if one of the conductors actually touches the metal of the box it'll be taken directly back to ground because it's easier for it to go through the ground wire than it is to go through a person or to go into the uh, wood framing. So I'm going to pull these back out. These are actually hot right now. I'm going to be careful. And I've got these grounding screws. Looks like we can we can do a grounding screw in the sides here. And the problem is going to be actually getting the screwdriver in a position to actually screw that in. Sometimes they fit the actual shaft of the screwdriver better than trying to use the flathead. Yeah, there we go. Seems to be working. And then we're just going to take this piece of ground. I've already got a, a little C bent into it. And we're going to put that around grounding screw. Twist this with the other grounds. Give it a good twist with the pliers. Cut it. Now that box is grounded. Next, let's staple up our wire. And the way you staple it is every 24 inches or at every joist, you use a staple or, I like these, these are one of my favorites. NM staples that are actually plastic with two nails. I don't like the little ones. I like these. They have some of these where the nails are so thin that you just, I mean, they're like, they're like bread ties or something and you hit them and they just bend. But these, these are pretty good thick nails. That's it. Every joist, every couple of feet. It all stapled up here. Now it's time to turn the power back on and see if all this works or if we've really botched something up. Yay! All right, which one were we? This one, 21. Yeah. Now, if we turn this on and it doesn't trip, that's a good sign. We'll just use my test light here. Turn it on. Yay. Next one. And Just assume that one down there has power too. And that's it. That's how easy it is to add two outlets and tap into an existing circuit. 
I should get what 250,000 miles out of this. <laughs>